everyone so today we're going to be making bold choices and we're going to be putting pattern tile down in our foyer okay so i'm going to start out with putting a uh, plastic uh, sheet um, here over the entrance um, so when we remove the tile um, the dust doesn't settle in on the furniture in there um, we, i'm not going to do it over here but um, i just want to do it on that side so that we don't get dust on the furniture also what i'm doing is um um, I were already done that I, I went through with the, the box cutter and went along the baseboard and just cut because I'm gonna pull the baseboards up and I don't want to rip the paint off taking out the transition piece so it's gonna be a matter of just taking this pry bar sticking it under there and popping it out that's pretty straightforward um, and then to get the tile up um, I, I'll use all three tools you see here so hammer you know bust into the first one um, until and once I get the pry bar under it, and you know, I'll try to pop them up, um, and then the straight edge to get all the remaining mortar off. There are larger tools um, that you know give you a lot more leverage and power. Um, I don't have those, so but this should work. Uh, sometimes the mortar is on there really good, uh, and you will need one of those larger tools because it, um, it can be kind of a bear to get off. Another tool that I had to use a flathead screwdriver to clean the track out uh, that held the transition piece. Um, I'm going to go ahead and remove that track. Um, and the reason for that, it's kind of on the edge of the baseball, excuse me, the baseboard uh, there. So the transition piece doesn't look clean um, or didn't look clean. So I will just go ahead and uh, remove the, the track and then I will make, I will bring the tile to about right here. And when I do that room, I'll tile to here. So I remove the track and that gives me a gap here to start to remove the tile. So I'll put the pry, pry bar in there and just start hitting it with the hammer and pop it right up. Okay, so it turns out uh, this using this masonry hammer, you know, sticking it in there like that and then hitting, hitting it with the hammer head, you know, hammer against hammer. That's working better, so. Um, I've had success with the pry bar. Uh, the only thing is, is this tile is on here really good. Uh, if you walk on tile, older tile, and you hear it's kind of hollow, those are usually easy to get up. This is this is pretty solid. So, uh, but this masonry hammer, you know, with that spike in there like that, uh, and then hitting it with another hammer, is working much better. Okay, the masonry hammer and the hammer worked good together. One problem is, is I want to try to pull the tile and the mortar up. That doesn't always happen. And I also want to kind of go at this much faster. So I've got this chisel here, or two chisels, this wide blade one and this longer one. So I'm hoping to, uh, to just kind of move through this much quicker and uh, have it more clean by the time I'm done pulling all these tiles up. Okay, so I got all the tile up and that little bit of tile makes a big mess. And I've enlisted the help of my lovely wife with her lovely shoes. <laughs> so we got all that tile moved out of here, um, but it turns out the mortar, is, it's on here pretty good. Um, so I've tried different approaches um, to get it off. and It's coming off, but it's going to be slow. But I just want to show you some, some of the different tools. So um, using a, use a masonry hammer and a chisel. Uh, here, um, it doesn't got a super sharp edge. I can probably sharpen it. Um, so you just put, you, know, you put that against the, excuse me, put that against the tile or the mortar, and just hit it, and you knock the the, the mortar off. Um, same thing with this uh, razor blade here. Um, this works really well because you know, as a, since it's a razor blade, it kind of gets right up under there. Um, all that. Um, the impact from the hammer, you know, goes out into that one point, just cuts right through. So this works real well. You just want to have a bunch of um, razor blades on hand because you'll end up replacing them out. Um, but again, those, those two approaches are a little time consuming. Uh, also, there's an oscillating saw and there's a masonry bit on here. So you can see um, it has like, uh, I don't know if that's like diamond tipped or whatever, but I'll just turn that on real quick and you can see that. Um, how well it works. Well, that didn't work.
work that great at all. It, um, I had another blade that was doing a little better. Um, so maybe this is a little wore out. Um, but it can, I mean, if the, if the mortar is kind of loose, it breaks right through it pretty well. So it can work, just depends on how well the mortar's on here. Um, but again, because that was going slowly, um, I, um, I'm opting to go with my angle grinder, and I got a, one of these diamond tip bits that you can um, um, put on here. Uh, so one note about this, this works well, very really well. Uh, it's going to grind right into it, you know, because I can just grow, go over top of it. I can go at the side, and it's just going to eat it up. Um, but it's really, really dusty. So if you rent um, one of these tools for cleaning up your um, um, for cleaning up your floors, you you will still have to buy this. So that's why I still have it. I rented one of these a long time ago, but then I found that it actually this blade will fit on an angle grinder. So. Um, I've used it before my anger grinder it works just fine um, but but when you rent these it comes with like a vac that will help suck in the, the dust and um, you know that so because the dust is, is just crazy um, so because I don't want to be doing this all night long um, uh, and I you know I don't have um, obviously that 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 vacuum system that comes with the with the rental um, I'm going to just have my shop back. I'm going to use one hand on the angle grinder and then my shop back here. I'm just going to hold the, um, the hose kind of up to it to help try to catch some of it. The other thing is that I'm completely taping off. So I'm not done here. My wife went to go get more painter's tape, but I'm going to tape um, this whole room off. So I'm going to tape that down, put some weight at the bottom, um, tape this down over here, and then um, open the front door and uh, so so yeah that that right there will will do the trick and uh... as you can see there's a dust storm going on in there from using the, the saw blades to get all the mortar off the floor from the old tile and um, all the doorways are taped up in the house but that is the view from the front porch it is a dusty mess so Definitely have to tape everything up, and I honestly don't even know how he can see to work in there, but that's the glory and joy of putting down the tile. Okay, so that didn't work out so hot. This mortar is rock hard, and I burnt my angle grinder out, so, uh, um, you know, that's a, that's a bit of uh, torque that that um, diamond a bit uh, puts on there and uh, yeah burn it out and again removing this rock hard mortar um, so what's turning out to work the best is this hammer and uh, razor blade uh, straight edge here uh, also what's working uh, we bought this today uh, it's called a razor scraper so um, it does good um, especially so for the solid stuff maybe not so great let me see like some of this stuff right here that's solid uh, like right here get to where you have the the rows of mortar here um, it, it actually will break that up much better so so the hammer and the razor uh, straight straight edge and then the um, razor edge or the excuse me the razor scraper for uh, this stuff here it's a, the uh, razor scraper is obviously faster because you know you're using the uh, you're standing up and you have more leverage um, and the um, straight edge and the hammer take a while so okay as you can see i've got the mortar all removed from the floor and that was a lot of work that was some rock hard mortar um sometimes it's real brittle and just comes right up but i really had to put a lot of work into this um i thought i was going to get to tiling today um and um and i spent you know pretty much a big part of the day just on this part here to the door finishing that last bit up so um, it's a lot of work and you know, obviously went through a lot of tools and it used and ended up being the razor scraper. As you can see, the metal compacted down from all the hammering. Um, the blade no longer sits in here correctly. You see it's kind of because um, just the hammering into the mortar. Um, but that's what did it for me. Maybe some you know, professional tools that are better. Um, 
the angle grinder um, so I was using my angle grinder was um, too small for the bit that I had I was actually at the home improvement store the other day and saw yeah they have bigger beefier angle grinders so um, and they also have smaller floor grinding bits so I have the big uh, that may have been like an 8 inch um, bit um, 8 inch in diameter but um, they have a smaller bit that my angle grinder would have handled so um, but hey, uh, you know, that's the way you learn sometimes is, uh, to mess things up. So, uh, but yeah, that's how I removed mortar from my, my floor. And now I'm ready to begin tiling. Things that you'll want to consider in doing pattern tile, um, or just in general for tiling. Uh, so one thing I wanted to show you, cause we've just learned about this. I've done a couple of tile jobs, but I didn't realize this, but. So you see this PEI number. So what that is, is a measurement of the hardness of the tile. So tile not being as hard as porcelain tile. Um, now they recommend that it, you have a rating of PEI three uh, for, you know, like uh, flooring. Uh, so ceramic um, tile, typically, you know, the ones that you can put down the floor is gonna be rated at three. And then the porcelain tile, is um you know as you can see here this is porcelain tile and it's rated for four uh commercial grade would be five um and so typically that just means it's going to be um have the durability to handle uh the foot traffic um so so ceramic being um um good enough if it's rated high enough uh, and then porcelain being better so just there's something to think about to look at when you get your tile so this is something, another thing you would consider when you're looking at tile um, is um, ensuring that you get all your tile are of the same, I think they call it the die lot number. Well, on this particular brand, they don't call it that. They just have it the shade number. And it turns out that we had some where our shade number was not the same. And not only is the shade different when you lay the tile, but they're also different in size. So here's an example right here. You can see where these tile, the three of them, as you can see, are the same um, shade number, um, but that, but that uh, fourth one, that smaller one, see doesn't line up there uh, in the bottom right corner, that is a, a different um, uh, shade number. So they, they have different, I don't know, way they, they cast them, maybe different molds or whatever, that are not all exactly the same size. So. So if you make sure that you make just for the brand of tile it is, just make sure it has some type of like die lot number or um, in this case a shade number and make sure they're matched up because now we got to take two of these boxes back um, because of that. We've noticed that with other types. So, uh, so if you see a um, tile that are on sale kind of sitting at the end cap uh, where they have their, where they're, you know, maybe they're not in a box. Uh, be careful. Usually they're on sale and they're selling them real cheap, but they're probably all from different um, numbers and you know, different uh, a lot numbers. So, so a lot of times those, those tile, even though they've got a good deal on them, they're not going to all be the same size. So that's something to consider uh, when you're purchasing your tile. So there, it, uh, my wife just pointed this out, is that if the store pulls them down for you and, and, and gets you the, the amount that you want, um, go ahead before you um, purchase them, you know, pull them out of the store. Just look at the boxes real quick, make sure all the, the numbers are the same. Um, and, and they all match up because um, in this case, these tiles, uh, the uh, home improvement stores wanted to uh, pick them, you know, got, got them down with a forklift and, and loaded them up on the cart. Um, so just double check. Okay, next up you'll want to in order to get your um, tiles laid down properly, you'll want to uh, snap a chop, chalk line. And it can be kind of challenging because your, um, your walls, you know, drywall may not be perfect, you know, but I know I've heard where, you know, they'll measure the halfway points uh, between, you know, the, the front, uh, you know, of your room. So measure a halfway point and then measure a halfway point back here. And then you just you run a chalk line, you know, to that, get that midpoint. Um, what I ended up doing, so there was uh, this, you can kind of faintly see it. So when they 
um, put the fr the framing in. They fixed it to the slab. They ran a chalk line there. It's a red chalk line. So you can kind of see it. Yeah, there we go. And um, I just used it to kind of um, to establish this chalk line here. The first one I messed up. It was a little off, but. So um, I established this chuck line here. And then what I did from there is I just kind of laid some tile out just to look and see, hey, does that look okay up against the door? If I was to walk in, what it looked like, my tile is kind of going off to one side and it looks good. So look, it looks good up against the wall. Um, it looks perpendicular to the, to the door. So, um, so I'm gonna use that one that I just established. So if you have any good points of reference, like. Like I said, like this little framing chalk line that was already there, then, you know, use that. Um, so just to demonstrate here, um, so I got I got it stretched out here. And you get somebody in the middle just to snap it. Okay, and see, there it is. There's your chalk line. I mean, th that's just an example one, but... Um, and then uh, you'll also want to um, do a... So I got the one running from end to end and I'll and I'll do one that's perpendicular to it and you can start from that you know that where the, you know the x marks the spot between those two um, chalk lines um, so so yeah that and just, you definitely got to get that you want to get it right before you get started because you don't want your tiles to like I said to look like they drift off towards the corner the next step uh, now that uh, you you got your chalk lines in place um, you know, there could be residue, you know, dust from um, just kind of them moving in and, up, in and out and everything. So that, that loose dust can uh, prevent the mortar from adhering to the concrete. So you just want to make sure that's all cleaned up. So I got this, uh, you know, bucket with old rags in it. Just, just going to rinse, just kind of wipe the floor down. So here's some of the... Um, tiling tools that I use. Um, these are trowels. Uh, so this first one here is a square notch trowel and it's um, it's got a, I think it's, yeah one quarter inch um, notches in it. So you'll apply the mortar down um, to the um, concrete slab um, with those notches and then slap the tile down on, on, on top of that, that mortar. And then you're able to kind of wiggle because of the, the, the gaps between the mortar uh, to to kind of get that that tile set and um, you know the way you want it uh, and then you know this one right here is good for tight spaces if you have to cut along a wall um, you know make it uh, for a very small tile piece you can uh, apply the you know apply the mortar like that you know um, and then these I'll use these all to to put mortar onto my trowel. I'll, I'll scoop it with these with these right here and just apply it and spread it out and kind of get it ready to go. Um, and it seems like I end up using the um, the uh, squared one uh, more. Um, but it's just good to, to have. And so what I usually do is I have the bucket that I put the mortar in. Um, this is not the one I mix it in. Um, so the, here then I use a five gallon bucket to mix it. With uh, a larger, you know, you want to do a, I don't know if they consider it a masonry drill bit, drill or something like that, but it's got the mixing bit on there. And obviously you've got to have a larger drill to handle all the um, uh, torque that's going to be on that um, bit, mixing the mortar. So I'll do this, uh, mix it all in this large five gallon bucket. And, uh, and then obviously I have some water ready to go to mix in there. So it has a formula, kind of like baking a cake, on you know how much water to put in. So I have some instructions back because it's going to be different per um, um, the type of mortar that you get. But um, okay, so so far I have half the floor done here, and just want to give a couple pointers. So um, I'm using a leveling system that makes it to where people that can't tile they can tile because they can you know get their tiles all on plane. So and that what what that consists of is a little stud here. And so because the stud is going right here at the um, tile, the lines on the tiles intersect, um, I get the, the, this is the C type stud. And so see, it makes a, a T 
right there so that the tiles can all align on it. But there are other, I, I use those to, to level them down. Um, and the one thing I wanted to point out is that when you're using a leveling system, it may take a little bit, a little bit, maybe a little bit more involved to, to get your studs in place. Um, and uh, so I don't like mix a whole bag of mortar because you may not have enough time to get it all down when you're working with these studs and trying to get everything aligned. Your mortar will go bad before you have a chance to use all of it. So I used about, I made about a, almost a half a bag of mortar last night. Um, well, I started out, I used a whole bag. So I wasted a whole bag because because it went bad on me. So I just went down to using like less than half of the of the bag of mortar. So that, that might help you to not waste mortar if you're working with a leveling system. And, and this doesn't apply obviously to professional because you know they can knock it out. Um, me, I'm using a leveling system. It takes me longer, the mortar goes bad. So just, you know, don't use a whole bag of mortar. Um, if you can even get away with maybe a third, a third of a mortar or up to a half, you know, that'll work. Um, but, and then with this pattern tile, just make sure you're paying attention as you go along. Check your pattern because every now and then you'll slip and you'll put a pattern of a tile the wrong way. If you, it's easier to get it up while the mortar has not set yet. Um, because if you go back, if you if it if it dries and you have to go back with the hammer and bust it up, and then and then clean up the spot, clean all the mortar underneath it, and then you know uh, start all over again. So um, so you definitely if you're doing pattern tile, check your pattern as you go. Um, so I just want to provide that tip uh, about the mortar if you're using a leveling system, maybe just don't mix it all. Uh, and then right now I'm just going through because I need so the caps. Caps can be reused here. You just spin those off. This is the orange thing. Well, what used to be orange. Um, you can reuse that stud. It's a one-use thing. Uh, so I only have so many caps, so uh, I'm about to start up another round. So I'm going to go through and bust these caps off. And um, and then I, and I'll be able to start it, start tiling this next second round and have a whole new fresh set of caps. So. You're a hard worker. So now I'm at the point where I'm about to uh, grout. Um, so floor turned out pretty good. Um, you, not everything was perfect. So when you're doing uh, eight inch tiles, the the thing is, is that, you know when you're going over a long distance, it's kind of it's kind of tricky to keep them all straight. Um, the leveling system did help keep it on plane, but it was it it was kind of tough. Um, there are some things that are a little off. Um, but um, I, I prefer a larger tile that uh, just seems like it's, um, you know, less uh, opportunities to make mistakes. Um, so now that I'm, you know, got uh, the, the, everything down um, and everything's, you know, had time to, to cure, um, I, you know, I think 24 hours is usually good for grouting. I'm going through and just making sure all the grout lines are clean. And so I'm using, uh, I forget what this is called, but it's... Uh, just got this little um, tip here. It's like a I don't know diamond tip blade, and just um, it's kind of coarse, so I can go through and grind out the, 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 the some of the where the where the mortar had filled in too much. Um, it's not too bad, so uh, shouldn't take long to do that. The other thing I'm using is a razor blade. This leveling system that I use, it's the Rigid Level Max. Um, so with the squared tile, you want to be able to look down the line and make sure everything is kind of, they're all kind of lined up right. Well, that was the problem with this is the stud kind of prevented you from looking and seeing if everything was on and the cap kind of blocked because when you tighten it, it can kind of twist the tiles because they're smaller. So that's the thing. Um, it, you, you, your tiles, you had a chance to for them to be off. Um, and there's several spots in here where I can show you where the tile's off, but I, I don't like to look at them. So um, so that's the other thing is that this this right here, you know, um, can prevent you from getting those square tiles perfectly lined up. Um, so, th so that's the lessons learned from is just, you know, uh, maybe do some research on your leveling systems to see what's the best. Um, and this, I really like uh, the Level Max, but for this application, for these type of tiles, um, probably not the best. <laughs>